Welcome back to the Gem Cutter's Craft. Today I want to take you on a different kind of journey than I've showed you on this channel before. Typically we're cutting gemstones and showing the process of how to do the cutting, but today I want to talk a bit about design. In my journey of going from gem cutter to teacher to book writer, I become quite proficient at using software to make gemstone designs as well as reverse engineering ancient designs or designs based on photos or drawings in order to make a cut design file that will let us actually cut the design that we want. Every once in a while I get hired by a customer to actually reverse engineer a previously existing design for one reason or another and today I'm going to walk you through my process of doing that to give you a little bit of idea about how we can combine Photoshop Gem Cut Studio, and a couple other handy little pieces of software in order to make an accurate recreation of a historical design. So now that I've got my windows set up, it's time to figure out what my starting ratios for this stone are gonna be. I can easily do this in Photoshop by just drawing a box around the picture. I wanna make sure that my dotted lines are lined up perfectly with the girdle, and I can look at the pixel size of each one of those if I want to figure out the length to width ratio, I can take it into the calculator and divide it, but actually Gem Cut Studio allows us to select our starting ratio, so I don't even need to know that. I can literally put in what the pixels told me, and it will create the size that I need. Now, this picture doesn't show me the height, which is a problem. I don't know how deep this stone actually is supposed to be, so I'm going to just have to guess. So I make the height as long as the length, which I know will be too long, and this gives me a proper starting point. From there, I need to set up some visual guidelines. I'm using an app called Redline Tools. I really like this app because it lets you just put horizontal lines across the entire screen that will jump between all the different apps that you're using. This is perfect for what we need to do here. So I draw a couple of initial lines showing the outline of the stone on the length and the width, and then putting lines across all of my steps and all of the intersections where the facets need to meet so I can follow along inside Gem Cut Studio. This is crucial for making a perfectly accurate recreation of your drawing. Once I've got the lines drawn in, I resize the Gem Cut Studio screen size so that my stone perfectly matches the size of the lines, and then it's time to start drawing my facets. I don't know the angles that I need to work with, so I'm just using my own experience with step cuts because this has a step cut crown, and I'm gonna try to do something like 40, 30, 20 for my three steps. So I put in the first step and then I realized that my window size was actually scaling to the wrong line. So let me resize this really quick. All I need to do is resize the window and it will shrink down the stone. So this is perfect. Then I'm gonna cut in my steps so that they perfectly line up with the drawing lines following the red line tools lens that I put in. So I put in my first one. And I realized that I haven't put in all the lines that I need. So I add a couple more. Now that I've got everything resized, I can start to build the rest of my tiers. So I put in the second tier. Already I can see it's starting to erase the first tier. So I'm just going to go ahead and work backwards. So I'll put in my 20 to the edge of what the table should be. Then I'll go back and resize the 30. So that's tier two, match the line. And then I'll go back and do tier 40. So this is backwards from how you'd actually cut a stone, but it lets me get everything perfectly lined up so I've got three tiers on the ends of the stone. Now I'm gonna figure out what my stars should be. So I figure those are gonna be plus two. They're a bit shallower than the tier three angle. I play around a little bit, just experimenting, and eventually I get them to be very close and then I can use the jump and meet functions to perfectly line them up. And now the ends of the stone, three steps and stars are done. So now I'm gonna turn the stone around and work on the length, which is what I call the sides. I readjust my window positions so that my Gem Cut Studio window is the right size and the right position to line up with my Photoshop image and the red line tools. And now I'm gonna start building the end facets. So I noticed that there's a slight imperfection in the width of my stone. So I'm gonna adjust the side facets really quick just by cutting in my 96 and 48 facets a little bit more. And then I'm gonna start building the side facets. So I'm going to use the exact same angles that I used for the ends, 40, 30, 20. But first I need to draw some red line tools lines so that I have something to line these facets up to. 
Then after that, I'm going to go inside of GemCut Studio itself and make sure that everything matches up perfectly. Right now, I don't have any corner facets, so I don't exactly know how big each facet should be. I can't exactly see the meet point junctions yet because I haven't created my curve on the outline shape. That's going to come next. First, I make sure that all three tiers of facets perfectly line up to the lines, and now I can start working on the corners. So normally on like an emerald cut style cut, the corner should be at plus 12. So I'm just going to reverse engineer. Instead of starting with the outline shape, I'm actually going to start with tier three and work backwards to just get all my lines to line up and see if I can use the same exact three angles, 20, 30, and 40 from smallest to biggest, get all those junctions to line up. Then I have a bit of a guide to see how big tier one is versus how big the picture of tier one is. And then I can start to build the curve. Before I do that, I'll cut in just a sample as if it's an emerald cut of the curve at plus minus 12. And then I'm going to hand shape. So hand shaping the curve is a bit of a secret technique. It's pretty much just starting with the 96 plus and minus a certain number and then slowly cutting in plus 10 plus eight, plus six, plus four, and then going to the 24 side and doing the same thing. Plus 10, plus eight, plus six, plus four. The plus 12 is already there as the furthest point of the curve. And then you just have to go and play around with how thick each one of those plus 10, plus eight, plus sixes are to get the perfect shape of curve that you want. Maybe you need to even go to plus two. Maybe you need an odd number plus minus in there. It's up to you depending on the shape of the curve that you're trying to make. And in this one, I just played around a bit until I got it to look the way that the picture looks. Now I'm extremely happy with my outline. I think it really perfectly matches the shape in the drawing. Now I'm just going to go back and clean up all of my meet points, make sure that all the depths of all the facets are correct. Since I have all the facets in there and I figured out their approximate angles and I've got the shape of the outline correct, I don't really need to use the drawing anymore. I'm just going to adjust until everything's perfect and we will call that a day for the crown. Once I get all the facets aligned, I look at it again and realize I want to make some small adjustments on the corners. I'm not totally convinced now that I see everything in its right place that the corners are the exact size. So I'm going to do a couple little adjustments, pushing in how deep the corners go and then readjusting the curve with all those little plus 10, plus 8, plus 6s. And then I think this crown is actually complete and the drawing of the picture looks exactly like it does in Gem Cut Studio. So now we can go and work on the bottom. Before we can start designing, I need to reset all my windows. So I need to flip around my Photoshop image so that my window can be back into the top of the screen. I'm going to redraw all my red line tools lines and there's a lot more intersections on this one. So I'm actually gonna use two different colors, red where all the triangles meet in the middle and then blue where all the triangles meet at the sides. And I'm going to do this for the length and the width because I need to be able to match my facet angles and intersections exactly where the drawing says that it should be. Once I get all my lines in, now I go through the painstaking process of trying to figure out exactly how this design should work without having any idea about depth. Now, if I had an actual depth picture here, I would try to figure out what angles the bottom of the stone should be, by understanding the height of the stone, but here I'm just guessing. And also I'm trying to build a sapphire design from a pattern that I know is made for a diamond. So I'm not even sure if this is going to work. So I just start with basic guesses, shallow angles, followed by deeper angles, followed by deeper angles. My first idea is just to do all the steps. I can see that there's four steps in the middle of all these triangles. I line up my steps with the red lines, and then I'm gonna go back in and try to draw some star facets or triangle facets that will connect all these together. So I start with the culet. I can see that this looks like a normal star crown facet. So I'm imagining something like plus minus two, a couple degrees deeper than tier four. And I quickly realized that this approach is not going to work. It kind of breaks all of the other facets. So it was pointless for me to put all four tiers in. Better just to start with the shallowest tier and work backwards. Now the bottom of this stone design is really, really complicated and it takes me a long time to figure it out. So far I put in about 20 minutes of work or so into this whole project 
The crown was really, really easy. It's based on things that I already know, like an emerald cut with star facets and building a cushion shaped curve. So 20 or 30 minutes and I'm able to get the entire crown done. But I think for the entire pavilion, it took me about an hour and a half. Lots and lots of experimentation, lots of mistakes, lots of trial and error. And eventually I get it to the point where I'm pretty happy with the ends, though I can see that the depth of my stone is incredible right now. I'll worry about that later. I'd rather just get all my meat points connected and then I can just use GemCut Studio's scale Z function and adjust the depth of the stone based on my final critical angle. So lots and lots and lots of experimentation and eventually I do get the entire side done other than the last tier. I need to get my corners cut in first before I can figure that out. But here you can see most of the facets are in for just the side. So four tiers, four sets of triangles except for the last set and I'm ready to work on the ends. Before I start the ends, I'm gonna put a couple of temporary corner facets in because I know that there are corner facets there and I know that those facets will affect the shape of the ends. So I put in a couple of plus minus 12s and then it's time to start to build the pattern based on the picture. I'm gonna start with angles that I think are correct, which are similar to the angles on the sides, but quickly I realized that the end angles need to be adjusted. They have their own angles. These ones are quite complicated because there's lots of little triangles in here and they need to be about the same height as the triangles on the sides. So lots more experimentation, lots of trial and error, adjusting, 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 but eventually I do get something that looks kind of close without having perfect corner intersections, it's really hard to see if the facets are in the right place, but just to get them kind of in the right place is good enough for now, and then I can tighten everything up in the end. It looks like a mess right now, but I promise it will come together. Next step is to work on the corners. Now this was really the hardest part. These are weird, weird facets with lots and lots of multi-intersection meet points. I can see that there are four main tiers they look like the big triangles or the diamond shaped triangles. The last tier is split in half. And then I've got the sort of star facets that jump between the two tiers. And it took me quite a long time to figure this out. This was really the hardest part. And then of course, once you get them all in there, sort of, you have to make sure that the sides and the ends all meet up and they all look like they're the right size. Again, lots of experimentation, lots of trial and error, lots of mistakes, but eventually I did get something that looked pretty much right. So after a couple of hours of experimentation, you can see here I have a really great looking replica of what this stone should look like. So now I'm gonna change my rendering options, my lighting model, and I wanna look at this in diamond because that's the stone that was actually meant to be, and just get a sense of how it looks, how it performs, you can see I've already gone through and labeled all of my facets. I put everything in the right angles and now I'm just going to adjust the angles so that it looks really, really good with diamond. I've already kind of figured out that even though I wanted to make this into a sapphire, the kind of angles and indexes necessary are just too deep for a sapphire. I think if you didn't have to be constrained by the 96 index and maybe I would design it around 120 where I have more index options and I can get the stars a little bit closer together, I could make the stone a little bit shallower. But in the 96 index, this is the best I can do. And you can see here, I've got everything in cutting order so that somebody could reproduce this from girdle to keel line and then from girdle up to the table. So this has been a very exciting adventure. Lots and lots of lessons learned, mistakes along the way, but I'm really happy with what came out. It's really tested my ability as a designer and a user of GemCut Studio and just as a geometrician. The more times that you do an exercise like this, the better you get at it, the more that your mind starts to really understand how angles and indexes work, which means that when you wanna go and cut a stone on the fly, improvise on your machine, I couldn't necessarily build something like this in real time, but I could definitely build something a lot more complicated than I used to be able to. So now that it's all done, let's check out the render and see what it looks like. It came out super well. I'm super happy with how this looks. The render looks awesome. I think if you could cut this in real life, it would look awesome. And I think that the design really matches the drawing that was given to me by the customer. 
Once we're done, we can go print it out and see that everything's in order. We've got our drawing. We've got all of our instructions for angles and indexes. And anybody, including yourself, could download this and cut it for themselves. If watching this exercise has been interesting for you and you want to learn how to do this for yourself, we have an online course at our Faceting Apprentice online school called Software Design Fundamentals. This is a multi-project course that will walk you through a bunch of different exercises from the bare basics of how to work Gem Cut Studio into more advanced topics like asymmetrical designs, comparing designs, using the software to plan recuts with real-world examples, how to make different recut models and compare them, and a bunch more exercises, including taking a drawing and reverse engineering it into a working diagram that you can cut for yourself. Thanks so much for watching this video. This has been Justin K. Prim with the Gem Cutters Craft, and I'll see you right here for the next one.